Crowd much longer. Nice stuff. Sets up shot with the up smash. Gets the red stuff. Oh, did you just whip a grab, sir? He said, my boots have way more range than your grab ever will. Don't even get close for comfort like that. I that was so clean. Now, he threw me for a loop because I thought that we were about to see down tilt with the forward tilt. He said, no, sir, here's my up smash. Don't even think about going high over me. There's not a corner of the world that COVID-19 has not touched. And in the world of esports, the FGC is undoubtedly feeling the consequences. Now to talk about how the Smash scene is coping, we've invited commentator Rodney Conyers. Hey, man, welcome to the show. It's, uh, it's been a while. How have you been? I've been awesome. Just, you know, at the house, quarantining, playing video games, eating good food, doing all that stuff I'd like to do when I was 14 before it builds. We get to do it now again. Here we're, we are. We're back. We're back to how we were living when we were teenagers as, as gamers, right? Well, so, so how have you been personally affected by this? Are you just staying inside playing games like it's the kind of the same old, same old? Yeah, just staying inside, playing video games, um, just, you know, making sure that I'm reaching out to more people in the community as well. I know everybody kind of handles isolation differently. I know you and me, we're very extroverted people. We like to get out. We like yeah. to talk. We like to check energy. But not everybody in the community is like that. So I've just been reaching out to friends and just seeing where everybody's headspace is. Hey, what a what a nice guy, man. This is this is why we get along, I think, man. Just make taking care of other people. I like I like it. Well, let's let's talk about the Smash community then. How do you think the effect of COVID nineteen is, is going to have, or what effect is it having now on the um, on the community? And like, how is this differing from other esports scenes? Knowing that Smash is very like in person. Um, I think the best way to look at this, and this is even kind of stepping aside of, of esports, but since yeah, obviously this is the esports talk show, we're going to talk about esports. Yeah. Just keep it, uh, keep it with the mentality of like a glass half full type of thing. You know, mm -hmm. it's very easy to get kind of wrapped up in the hysteria and all the bad things that you know comes with this virus. I mean, it's a global pandemic. We know it's terrible. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's not a lot we can really do about it at this point, except for just look out for one another. The beauty of Smash is that we have always, I mean, Brody, you know this more than anybody yep. else. I'm preaching to the choir here. We are a grassroots community, so we are used to not having a lot as it is already. So if you take the majors away, that's perfectly A-OK. -okay. If you take away the Smash EG brackets nonstop, that's perfectly A-OK. -okay. Mm -hmm. We will certainly get along with just playing online Wi-Fi with just, you know, playing, you know, locally. Less than 10 people, of course. Yeah. Right? Is, that, is, that the, is that the statistics? Less than 10 now. So yes, keep your numbers small, keep reaching out to one another, and if you can play online, by all means, please, please play online. It's the best way to stay safe. Well, with that note, I mean, especially because you look at the, the Melee community, unless they're, you know, using Dolphin and, and playing online, that you kind of have to be in person. Uh, so I'm wondering just specifically now, this comes off the tail of the introduction of the Smash World Tour that was announced earlier in March. How is the community mm -hmm. responding to that uh, and, and feeling about this? Uh, you know, we all had high hopes, and we still have yeah. high hopes for the World Tour. Brody, I know I've seen your tweets. I know you've seen my tweets. We're super hyped. It's finally happening. But we also know that good things come to those who wait. And so with that in mind, if we have to lose a couple of events, I know we've already lost Pound. We've lost a couple other ones. I believe Momocon mm -hmm. is postponed. Combo Breaker might be in jeopardy. Get on my level. I don't know what's going on with that either. But for the most part, if we... Just, again, look out for one another, mm -hmm. you know, keep everybody updated with what's going on. And if nothing else, please, please, please support your local TOs. You know, your local TOs, your national TOs, they are the ones that are trying to bring the community together. Mm -hmm. And especially when the world tour gets back in line and we can all go back outside and breathe fresh air again and play video games with other human beings and not the CPU. Yeah. Um, they are going to be the ones that are really going to provide the infrastructure to really get things back in order. So please like I said before, keep checking in on your friends. Well, on that note, uh, let's you know talk about like a, a, an issue. I don't even really think it's an issue, but like recently, a few tournament organizers have been offering mm -hmm. refunds for the tickets, of course, but they're also mm -hmm. accepting donations from the sales. And some are saying it's mm -hmm. unfair to ask for donations, while other think it's important, obviously, to make sure the community doesn't push away major tournament organizers. What are your thoughts mm -hmm. on this? Because like as someone that came from TOing myself, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm all for like, I would leave my ticket and I would donate it. I'm all for that side. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm certainly for that as well. Um, but honestly, it's, it's just as sad as it is to say, it's just a case by case thing and yeah. everybody's going to go about it differently. Now, you and I, obviously, we've been in esports for a very long time. We support our organizers because it's always a give and take when you work as on-air talent. You know, it's kind of hard to commentate and to host if there are no TOs. And as a TO, it's kind of hard to host events if you can't get people to show up. So it's always a give and take. And I've, I've never wanted people to feel like, you know, 
the TOs were on this level and then the players are here and then the rest of the community is here. I think with the fact that we have this coronavirus thing sweeping the globe, mm -hmm. everybody's on equal playing field here. You know, regardless of what your position was a week or two ago or however long you've been doing the social distancing thing, mm -hmm. we are all on the same level and we all have to continue to keep helping out and keep checking in on each other. Financially, uh, you know, emotionally, economically, whichever way you can yeah. do it, please do it. Because once this is all said and done, we're going to have to pick up the pieces where we left off and it would be great to do that on a strong foot. Well, I think that's the thing too. Is again, someone from, comes from uh, from TOing, and you mentioned it earlier on in the, in the in our talks here, is that it's a very grassroots scene, and a lot of people are doing this stuff out of their own pocket. You know, we there there mm -hmm. isn't official support, especially in the Smash scene. You know, from the top dogs like Nintendo and that. So, you know, a lot of people out of their own pocket, and some people even lose money. So, I think if you have that opportunity on what you're saying to help someone out, to help all these organizers, and to to give money to them and leave your ticket and say, hey, take this as a donation. I think it's uh, I think it's very important. Um, is there anything else that we can do for the TOs at this point, or is it mostly just like say, hey, keep the ticket, don't refund me, or is, or is there something else you can see in your eyes to help out uh, those TOs? Um, uh, well, I know, of course, financially is the biggest key. I think that's the one that's kind of most set in stone. We know that TOs they have to generate revenue to keep these events afloat. Now, and in terms of like if they're going in the green or if they're breaking even. Of course, you know, that's a topic for a completely different day uh, with somebody else who's more trained in the arts of financial TOing and event organizing. But for the time being, if you can, you know, just donate your ticket. If you can donate whatever it is that you can, please do it. Because Smash is a little different than other fighting games. You know, Capcom, they dump the money in. You know, they're not hurting on cash. Mm -hmm. Namco, they're not hurting on cash. NetherRealm, Smash is a little bit different. Yep. Okay, we are for the people, by the people. And, you know, if nothing else... I've DM'd a couple uh, TOs already. I've DM'd Toronto Joe. I've DM'd uh, Alexander Jabaley, a couple other TOs, just to see where their headspace is. You know, it's it's very nerve-wracking. You know, even though that they've been hosting for the better part of probably 10-plus years at this point, they always get nervous before they host. Are people going to show up? Are people going to love this? Are people going to appreciate it? If you can provide them with some clearer mental headspace, by all means, I mean, just, just let them know yep. that you are appreciative even if you can't donate a cent, let them know that you just you love what they do. Mm -hmm. And that honestly is enough to really keep them getting out of the bed and just moving forward. Exactly. I mean, hearing that appreciation for the hard work they do behind the scenes. <clears> absolutely. <throat> Amen. I can't say much more on that. Now, just obviously <laughs> things, you know, it's going to be dire for a little while as this goes on. What are some positives that people can can take from this to make sure they keep that, that good mental space? Um, you know, like I mentioned a, a bunch of times already, um, you know, this is a this is a time more than ever to really start supporting one another. You know, again, we are all on an even even playing field. You know, TOs were on the same level as the players who are on the same level as the content creators, you know, normal attendees, honor talent, you name it. One thing that I've been really into right now, and I know that I know you guys have interviewed a couple other top players in Smash in the past, and I think that they've mentioned the importance of content mm -hmm. creation. Now, you guys here at Squad, you guys are all about content creation. I see your guys' TikToks. I see, I see all that stuff. I love it. You guys are hilarious, and I love it. And, you know, it doesn't just stop there. Obviously, it needs to bleed over into the community mm -hmm. as well. Top mm -hmm. players, if you're, if you're watching this, keep creating content. Keep putting it out there. Let the rest of the world get know that, that the branding. Smash community. Yes, get that branding. And just let the world know that we aren't dead because, you know, the coronavirus is, mm -hmm. is sweeping the nation. You know, let them know that we are still alive and we're still thriving. We've just kind of gone a little bit more underground than what we've traditionally been used to in the last yeah. so many years, but it's still no stranger to us, okay? We've hosted tournaments, bro, you know this. Mm -hmm. You've heard the stories of Melee tournaments being hosted out of a garage, okay, yeah, in a yeah. kitchen. We don't care, like, okay? Just plug up and make magic happen for yeah, yourself. Yeah. Yep. Uh, now, I want to uh, get a question. We, uh, we asked some people online on Twitter to, uh, to give mm -hmm. some questions for you. So we got one here. I mean, I know you had a situation going with your Twitter right now, too. But um, we got uh, about two minutes here. Let's see if we can get pack this in. Uh, so we have a question from rforget23 on Twitter. They asked, what long-lasting effects do you think the current pandemic situation is going to have on the Smash community when events eventually resume in the future? Um, I think of nothing else. And this isn't even a joke, and this is not a troll. Hopefully, personal hygiene is the biggest takeaway <laughs> from all this. Amen. I mean, we're already reaching out to each other. We're already talking to each other. We're already, you know, checking in. We're social distancing properly. But if nothing else, please wash your hands after. You know what? I'm, I'm past washing hands. Get in the shower. After you use the restroom, the washer, whatever you call it, 
just get in the shower. Just wash your whole self up all over again, okay? So, There's no harm in that. You've, you've seen people's controllers. They get, like, the black grime in there. That's yeah. just... There, there's no need for that anymore, okay? This is a new decade, and we're going to start it off the right way. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. I think that's that's one thing. And I, I've, I've liked to see before, just thinking back to uh, a lot of TOs sometimes would, would have it in, like, their, their rulings that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you, you got to come in. If you smell bad, we're kicking you out. Um, even at one of my <laughs> events, I had, a, I had a clause in there that was, uh, if you show up bad, we're taking you outside and we're spraying, we're showering you in Axe. Although sometimes the smell of axe might be even worse, but you know, like it's it's something that's been an issue for for the, that scene for a while. So I think um, I think it's good. I guess that, that's an angle I hadn't really taken before. People might actually start cleaning themselves up a little better, and especially with the hand sanitizer, mm -hmm. soap, and all that stuff. So uh, we got a, we got about a minute left here. I just want to get some some thoughts from you. What are you up to when it comes to your branding, your content? Where can people find you? You, you on Twitch? You on Twitter? Or, well, obviously not anymore, but. Uh, shout out where, you're, where we can find you, man. Well, I'm 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 on Twitter. Um, I'm in the process of getting my account back. I think yeah. it, I was banned or temporarily suspended for tweeting about the coronavirus too much. <laughs> and if 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 that's enough, if that's gonna knock me on my, my bottom, I'm all for it. Okay. If you got to take my account away for me to spread the good word, I am all for that. But I'm also on Instagram, same name, Rodney cool. Conyers Jr. I'm on Twitch. Not streaming as much as I would quite like to. I'm kind of in like this writing phase, just getting new material. You know how you produce. Yeah, so I'm, yeah. I'm just I'm just following suit with you guys. But those are the big three for me, Brody. Twitter. Well, I hope to see that your uh, your Twitch keep taking off because I feel like I've been streaming. Uh, everyone's been streaming, and honestly, the numbers are up huge right now. Uh, so hopefully, I can catch you on a stream, man. I'll be jumping on later. Hopefully, you'll be streaming. But Ronnie, thank you so much for your time, and good luck with everything, and stay safe.